This is just crazy. Performance cars have developed to the point where 500 kilowatts of power is increasingly common. Once restricted to the world of exotic supercars, that level of grunt is now available in electric machines and family SUVs. And all three offer blockbuster performance. This isn't a serious comparison. It's a celebration of performance. With one man, three cars, 1,605 kilowatts, bad movie analogies, and even worse special effects with scary cars. This is Fright Club. You can buy a handful of cars with more than 500 kilowatts today, but we've picked three overpowered stars with different stories to tell. The first is Porsche's 911 GT2 RS. Evolving slowly over the course of decades, the 911 has grown larger and more fearsome with each generation, culminating in the most ferocious predator yet, the GT2 RS. Like the star of Jurassic Park, it's big, it's scary, and it really doesn't belong in our modern civilized world. Think of this as Tyrannosaurus Rex. The second is an Italian-American mix of heart and muscle from Fiat Chrysler automobiles. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is not particularly clever, but it is enormously powerful and can take plenty of punishment. It's the people's champion, Rocky Balboa. Trust me, it can put up a fight. The third car is Tesla's Model S P100D. It's a work of science fiction, using computers and electrons to threaten the automotive world as we know it. Intelligent, powerful and otherworldly in its performance, the Tesla is a Terminator, here to save us whether we like it or not. Priced from around $250,000 drive away and powered by a pair of electric motors with a combined 568 kilowatts of power, the Tesla is the quickest car here to 100 k's, reaching the mark in just 2.7 seconds if you use the right mode. Ludicrous mode, have a look at this. Do you want to do this? Do you want to push the limits? No, I want my mummy. Yes, bring it on. We'll hit that button and hit the throttle. And it's unlike anything else on the road. It's like a roller coaster when you put your foot down in the Tesla. It really is a unique experience. This is a car that has challenged the performance car hierarchy unlike any other model in the last couple of decades. It really did reset the benchmark. All you need to do is go on YouTube and have a look at Teslas in drag races, wiping out muscle cars, wiping out supercars, race cars, all kinds of interesting stuff. This genuinely is one of the fastest cars in the world and it does it in a way unlike anything else we've driven before. If the Tesla was a movie character, I think it might be the Terminator. It's a car that uses technology to threaten the existence of just about everything else that competes with it. The Tesla's electric performance feels like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. It is the future of performance. We know that. We know that many other mainstream brands are heading in this direction. The Tesla shows us a glimpse into what the future of performance will be. Like the Terminator, it's a car that offers killer performance. And like the Terminator, it uses artificial intelligence to become self-aware. This is a car that can drive itself in some circumstances. Yes, you should definitely observe it quite closely, but when you let the car do what it can do, it is a simply remarkable experience. The Tesla pushes the bounds of technology unlike any other car on sale. It really is something quite special. Moving on from one of the most sophisticated cars on the road to one of the simplest, Jeep's Trackhawk uses brute force to get the job done. Priced from $134,900 plus on-road costs, the Jeep is the most affordable ticket to the 500 kilowatt club. Like Rocky, it's a tough, simple guy with lovable charm. And of course, it really packs a punch. The Jeep is an absolute weapon in a straight line, thanks to its supercharged 6.2 litre Hemi V8 that makes 522 kilowatts of power. This thing really is quite quick, reaching 100 k's an hour in just 3.7 seconds. Now, it's wild to think that a car that does 0 to 100 in three odd seconds is the slowest car in our comparison group, but that is the ludicrous level of performance that we've come to expect from hero cars like this. Yes, the Jeep isn't the quickest car here, but really, it fights in a different weight class altogether. This is a family SUV, the sort of car that thousands and thousands of families are buying every month in Australia, one that blends that with genuine supercar levels of performance. This engine is a real thoroughbred. It's found in cars like the Dodge Hellcat in America, forged in the fires of the American muscle wars against the Chevy Corvette and Camaro and the hottest Ford Shelby Mustangs. It really is 
something quite special. The rest of the car doesn't really do it for me. It's a big, honest brute. This car delivers exactly what you expect of it. It's basically a Jeep with a massive engine and some massive tires and brakes too. It's got 400 millimeter Brembo brakes on the front axle that really haul this car up in quite a hurry. This massive amount of power can feel like too much for this chassis. It doesn't feel like a really well honed, holistically engineered performance car in the same league as something like the Porsche. But then again, that's not what you're buying. You're not expecting the most refined, delicate, track honed car in the world. You're expecting a big Jeep with a massive, massive supercharged engine that delivers punch unlike anything else in its class. And you hear that supercharger roar and you hear the V8 scream and you know that you've got something really special underfoot. It's an unforgettable car, the Trackhawk, and I'm really glad that we have it in Australia. The Jeep is not a sensible car, but the Porsche, it's just plain crazy. But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. This is a vehicle which makes zero sense to 99% of motorists. It's a race car for the road, with a track-ready roll cage, six-point harnesses, carbon ceramic brakes, and Michelin Cup tyres. Unsurprisingly, the GT2 RS is also the fastest ever production car around the Nürburgring. On the road, it feels exactly like that kind of car. It is loud because there's very little sound ending. It is stiff because the suspension is set up for high speed work on racetracks. It is just a thrilling machine to drive. When you're driving along like this at regular speed, you can just feel the car's focus fizzing through it. You can feel the tremor of the engine through the carbon fiber seats. You can feel every bump in the road through the floor of the car and through the steering wheel. It bangs and crashes and lets you know that you're in something totally uncompromising. which is okay because of how it feels when you do this. <laughs> this is an absolute animal. I think it's T-Rex from Jurassic Park. It's the apex predator evolved over millions of years, or in this case, 40 years, to just devour everything else in sight. It's a car that really keeps you on your toes and it delivers performance unlike the other pair. <laughs> You can feel the thing spin up the wheels when you floor the throttle. It's a car that really keeps you on your toes. You don't want to be a novice driver behind the wheel of something like this. The Tesla and the Jeep represent a new form of performance. The Porsche is old school. It's prehistoric in some ways. It's a supercar with massive performance, massive tires, aerodynamics, everything designed in a proper package to really give it an edge over the competition and you really do feel that. This thing is just insane on the road. Just as T-Rex prefers raw meat, the Porsche is an uncompromising experience. It's the least luxurious car you can buy for $645,000 plus on-road costs, putting all of its emphasis on exotic hardware, including a twin-turbo six-cylinder engine with 515 kilowatts and 750 newton meters. It's the only car that attempts to harness those sort of figures with just two wheels. Sometimes it even manages to do that without you worrying about extinction. Just sometimes. We never sought to crown a winner with this trio. Like choosing a blockbuster for movie night, everyone will have their own personal preference. I'd happily have any of them in my own garage. Ideally, you could have all three, the Tesla for business, the Jeep for family duties, and the Porsche on the weekends. Brilliant. 10 years ago, there were no cars on sale in Australia with 500 kilowatts of power. I never thought I'd see the day where that level of performance was available across such a broad variety of vehicles. And I can't wait to see their sequels.